How do science fiction writers predict the future? They look at how our current innovations might evolve to solve future problems. If you're curious about your own future, let's look at what some current science fiction writers predict. According to Feed by M.T. Anderson, you'll soon be able to access the internet right from your brain, no device needed. According to Free to Fall by Lauren Miller, you will be able to use an app to customize every decision you make in life. According to More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera, you'll soon be able to undergo a scientific procedure to eradicate your worst memories. And according to my own book, Where Futures End, you'll soon be able to live your entire life on camera so that you can make money from your social media feed. That all sounds great, right? I wonder if you can see any problems that might arise from some of these scenarios. If so, you have the makings of a science fiction writer. Writing the future starts by looking at how current innovations can solve our problems. For example, a writer might look at developments in medicine, technology, and scientific study, like with CRISPR, a new genome editing tool that we might be able to use to eliminate genetic diseases. Writers also look at where consumer demand is rising, like with drones, which Dubai could start using as early as this summer to transport passengers to their destinations in order to alleviate traffic conditions and shorten travel time. And writers also look at current cultural trends, like viral videos and images, which creators usually have very little control over, but which some are finding clever ways to monetize. So we look at all these developments, and then the fun part starts. We think about what might go wrong. The National Academy of Sciences and the National Academy of Medicine say that scientists could soon be allowed to make modifications to human DNA that would be passed on to subsequent generations. So a scientist could edit the genome of an embryo, and that embryo could develop into a person whose children will inherit the same change, and then their children and grandchildren will also inherit those changes. Uh, that could be something that would not affect just the person whose genome would, was originally edited, but it was a change that could be passed down from again and again. So that could solve a big problem for our society. It could help us get rid of diseases like Huntington's and cystic fibrosis, but it could potentially lead to new problems. We might inadvertently create new diseases which we would have no treatment for and which would be heritable for generations to come. Someone could abuse the technology to create new traits that the affected person might then grow up not to want. We could accidentally fall into a pattern of using this to create designer babies, and that would result in a stigma for people who are born with traits that are deemed less desirable. So I wonder if you can see a science fiction story that could rise from any of these scenarios. What about a story in which we follow the first people to live with a new disease and the puzzle of finding a cure? Or a story about a person who's genetically designed to be talented enough and intelligent enough and charismatic enough to rule the world? Or a story in which our society is divided into classes based on traits that people have paid for their children to inherit? Or let's put together all the ideas we've been talking about and create a story in which the CEO of a company that sells its genome editing services is held hostage in a drone over Dubai by a group of protesters hoping to create a viral video to warn people of the dangers of letting your DNA determine your future when in fact there's a perfectly good app for that. So to create a plausible futuristic scenario, we look at the innovation, we think about the problems it solves, and we forecast future problems that could arise. Maybe you've heard of a research company called X. They're creating a network of giant balloons on the edge of space to bring internet access to remote areas of the world. Let's take that a step further. What if accessing the internet were as easy as putting a chip in your brain so that you were always connected to the web? You could look up information at a moment's notice you wouldn't even need to go to school anymore because any facts you need, you could look up instantly. 
You could watch TV or listen to music anywhere, anytime, without anyone noticing because the program would feed directly into your brain. You could even get customized recommendations for the coolest stuff to buy when it's at the lowest price and the best places to hang out when they're the least crowded. But you might have trouble focusing very deeply on any one thing because of the constant stream of information that's distracting you. And you would have to be up on every trend because you wouldn't have an excuse not to know which TV shows or movies or slang is currently in. And if anything ever went wrong with your feed, you might find yourself becoming isolated from friends who are always on the web. You might experience a withdrawal. You might even find that you no longer know how to function without your feed, which is the plot of the novel Feed. It looks at an innovation, it thinks about the solutions that come with that, and then projects further problems. Let's look at one last example. Part of my own novel, Where Futures End, revolves around a virtual reality game that's so popular almost everyone plays it. And some people play it all day, every day. In the book, there's an alternate world that our world is connected to, but not everyone is able to travel there. And the people who can't travel there find that they can feel like they're in that other world by playing the virtual reality game. So, so many people play this game that our main character is able to make a decent living finding rare virtual items in the game and selling them to other players. But he also spends so much time in the game that he becomes desperately lonely and loses his nerve to interact with real world people. And he discovers that some of the rare items he finds are infected with malware by someone who's trying to create a powerful botnet. So we have our futuristic scenario an innovation, the solutions it presents, the problems that arise. We put a character into the middle of that, and now we can experience the joy of being immersed in a game. And this strange feeling of, of passing between a real world and a virtual world. And the sinking horror of realizing that someone is using this game for an evil end, maybe even to start a worldwide war. And now we have a story. By now, I hope I have inspired you to create your own futuristic story. Maybe your story will imagine new solutions to our problems. Maybe your story will warn us about future problems that we need to address now. Maybe your story will do what the best futuristic fiction does. It will hold up a mirror to society to show us our flaws and to inspire us to do better. Thank you.